always had a good sense of what was going to happen as an industry develops. Always kind of been, had a, a knack for being a leader in that. During the war, my mother lived in Houston, which is where I was born, and then uh, the war ended and they moved to Dallas, which is where I grew up. All of a sudden, my dad came home one day and said he'd bought a radio station in Port Arthur. We're, we're all moving to Port Arthur. Great people, but they're, they're tough. That's where I learned to be tough. Because my dad had the local radio station, I became a weekend disc jockey. So that was kind of my claim to fame in Port Arthur. Then I got out of school. I went to uh, the University of Texas. Uh, before my senior year, I took a detour into the Army Reserves during Vietnam. I became real independent during that time in the Army, so I ended up getting a job in Chicago where I went to business school at night. I was exposed to venture capital and decided that's really what I wanted to do. My first job was in New York with Morgan. My first deal was a company, it's actually in Dallas, called DocuTel. They were the first manufacturer of automatic teller machines, ATMs. I started Hicks and Haas in 1985. Bobby Haas was a, was a world-class negotiator. We would raise money on a deal-by-deal -deal basis, and we ended up doing, you know, six or seven major transactions. Tom is a pioneer. He's a trailblazer. Tom created one of the first private equity firms in the United States. In many ways, he helped invent that business. Perhaps Tom's cornerstone transaction was 7-Up and Dr. Pepper. That was a financial home run. We bought Dr. Pepper and literally within two months bought 7-Up, and that was a busy time. What put him on the map really was the acquisition of Dr. Pepper at 7-Up. He finds a lot of deals. He instinctively knows a good deal from a bad deal. He can almost instantly figure out how to finance that, how much debt, how much equity, what partners to bring in. He's just uh, amazing at how he can do that. One of the most well-known firms that Tom created was Hicks, Muse, Tate, and First. They did very interesting transactions for a number of years, managed billions of dollars. Of course, going back to Dr. Pepper and 7-Up, we coined that buy and build. We wanted to buy a platform company and use that platform company and the management team to go buy other companies in, in the industry. So that became part of our marketing. We were the first to do it, and now, of course, everybody does it. It was quite handy for us to use to raise money. In the late 90s, the FCC passed a new uh, communications law that opened up the radio business, and Tom and I came together. We bought, in a very short period of time, 350 radio stations, and combined with a large market radio group, it was the largest radio company in the United States. It was very successful. The people he had on that team were absolutely amazing. Tom is driven by measured risk. He's bold. I don't know that anyone else in the world has owned major sports franchises in two different continents. I bought the Dallas Stars in 1997. I bought it really cheap and fell in love with hockey, and we were good. In 1999, we, we won the Stanley Cup. In all my business experience, that's the most fun I've ever had. When George W's group wanted to sell the Rangers, they talked to me, and I decided that would make a, a good fit, so I bought the Rangers. So being a leverage buyout guy, I, I couldn't resist having debt. I put up half the money in equity, and I borrowed the other half, and that was a mistake. Tom had many successes on the field. He had challenges, ultimately, that he faced, but he did so in an incredibly positive manner. When the sports world uh, kind of collapsed on him, that would be the end of most people. He woke up uh, the next day and was uh, figuring out the next great deal. Tom loves his alma mater, the University of Texas. He's given uh, millions of dollars to the University of Texas. He was the uh, driving force behind the founding of UTEMCO, which is now the second largest endowment in the world. I think UTEMCO has got so much momentum. They've got great management, they've got great boards. And that was really what I created, was a, a structure that would have institutional memory. We didn't have that before. We had like six or seven billion dollars. Now the assets are, I think, approaching 60 billion dollars. Like most people, I want to give my philanthropy to where 
where I think it'll do the most good. And my mother suffered for 15 years with Alzheimer's. I watched her go through that, so I gave a very generous gift to UT Southwestern to establish a chair for Alzheimer's research. Much of Tom's philanthropic effort is actually giving of his time. He loves what he does. He loves business. And to this day, he hasn't slowed down a step. He's going every day trying to find the next big deal.